Well, good morning again. Um, thank you. I'm still getting used to that. Um, what a blessing it is to be here with all of you today. You know, it's, it's a blessing. Here we are, the 1030 Mass, a queen of all saints. And here I am, Father Stephen Carraher, celebrating probably my 16th Mass that I've ever celebrated in my life. And I think about how I got here. And I think about that day in the cathedral 15 days ago, June 1st, 2024, when I made those promises to the bishop, when I laid down on the floor, when hands were laid upon me, a prayer said over me, and I was changed into a priest. What a great grace and a great gift. Something that I have longed for for a long time, but something that maybe not many people would have recognized in me even as few as 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was walking into my freshman year over at Indiana University. And I was walking away for the first time from my family, my friends, my support group from Northwest Indiana. And I was anxious and excited. And I made two resolutions. First is I was going to find a community to be a part of. I knew that I needed something to do to, or some family to find over at Indiana University to make the campus of 40,000 students seem like a smaller family. People who I knew, people who knew me. My second resolution is that I was gonna make sure that that community was not gonna be found in church. Yeah. Um, so I was a Catholic through and through. Uh, I went to St. Thomas More Catholic grade school and middle school. And it was there that I learned about Jesus, learned about the sacraments, and I was going to Mass. And I was going to Mass even throughout high school. I went to public high school. But my faith back then was very simple and very young. See, I was going to church, going to Mass, faithfully on Sunday, because I didn't want God to be mad at me. I knew that it was one of the commandments to honor the Lord's Day, and you fulfill that by going to church every Sunday. So I made sure to do the bare minimum, show up for Mass one hour a week every Sunday. And my thought is I gave, my, I gave God my one hour and I could do whatever I want with the rest of the week. And that was my thought going into my freshman year of college. And I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to find a community and I knew that I wanted to find a community doing what I love to do in high school and I love to do theater in high school. So down in Bloomington, there was a lot of different auditions for a bunch of different plays and musicals, and I found one, and I auditioned for it, and I didn't get the part. And I thought, well, okay, there's a lot of people down here. I just have to work harder and be smarter. So I worked harder and harder, and I found another audition, and then I auditioned, and I didn't get that part. I said, okay, well, I just got to work even harder. I worked hard, and I found another audition, and I auditioned, and auditioned and auditioned and I kept on getting rejected and rejected and rejected and very soon the hard work that I was putting in, the drive to do this hard work was vanishing. And in my mind I wasn't thinking I got to try harder to get better, I was thinking I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for people to accept me, good enough for people to love me, I'm not good enough to be the person who people want to be with. And so I fell into myself. I spent so many hours, instead of practicing for auditions, just wasting time watching Netflix and YouTube in my college dorm room. Hours and hours, just not relating to anybody. And to tell you the truth, I was just miserable. Just absolutely miserable. Just look in the mirror and just see in the mirror just, uh, just a loser. Someone who I didn't like. But I was still going to Mass during all of this. In the beginning of my sophomore year, I walk into the church, the Newman Center at Indiana University because they had a 9 p.m. Sunday Mass. And when you're a college student, a 9 p.m. Sunday Mass sounds like a great idea. So I went to that 9 p.m. Sunday Mass, once again, just going there to give God my one hour so I could do whatever I wanted the rest of the week. And as I sat in that dark corner pew, at the very end of Mass, a student got up to the pulpit and made an announcement. He announced that there was going to be small group Bible studies happening throughout campus. And then he gave a little testimony about what small groups meant to him. He was a sophomore as well. In his freshman year, he joined a Bible study. And he found it to be a very beautiful experience of community 
and a beautiful experience of prayer. Now, if I heard that about a year ago, I would have said, absolutely not. I don't want to go to a small group Bible study. That's just a bunch of weird kids singing kumbaya in a dirty church basement. I don't want to do that. I want to be far away from that. But I was so hungry for community. And I was just so miserable that I saw that invitation and I said, you know what? What can I lose? Let's try it out. And so I did. And I went to that Bible study every week. And at first I was afraid to bring forward my faith, my own beliefs, my own relationship with Christ, or however non-existent that was. But I found as I went week after week after week, I began growing closer to Jesus. And we were just reading scripture, reading the Sunday readings and, and talking about them. And the people in this small group weren't those weird kids I thought. They were normal people with passions and talents and skills. People who were majoring in business and finance and music. People who loved fish and wildlife and camping and just about everything. And it was such a beautiful experience of entering into that community. And I loved it so much that my next year, my junior year, they asked me to lead a Bible study myself and I led it and I led it with a whole group of freshmen and they went on this really awesome retreat. I didn't go on this retreat, but they all came back and they're like, Stephen, you have to go on this retreat. This totally changed my life. And I was looking at them and I was like, what the heck? No way. Like, how on earth could this like, little weekend change your life? And I remember telling them, you know what? I'm going to just go just to see what's going on. But unless Jesus Christ himself, doesn't, if, unless Jesus Christ himself shows up, I'm going to be disappointed. And boy, was I not disappointed. Brothers and sisters, that weekend changed my life. It was at that retreat that the people running the retreat, they, uh, they acted out the scene of the passion of Christ all the way from the Last Supper up until when he died on the cross. And they had all of us retreat and stand and watch and receive. And watching that portrayed in real life struck me to the core. I realized that Jesus wasn't just some abstract historical figure. Jesus wasn't some concept. Jesus wasn't just a set of rules. Jesus was a person who died for me, who looked at me and didn't see a loser, looked at me and didn't see someone who wasn't worth it, looked at, looked at me and didn't see somebody who wasn't worthy of his love, but he looked at me and said, this is a man who is worth dying for. And I saw and felt that Jesus spilled every drop of blood because he wanted to free me of the burden, of the weight, of my loneliness, of my sadness, of my misery, of my sins, so that I might receive life through him. Totally changed my life. And I was at the retreat, we had a small group afterwards, and I really just felt moved by this whole experience and I saw you know, just what Jesus did for me and I saw, I made the connection that at Mass, this is what happens. At Mass, we get to encounter Jesus on the cross. At Mass, we get to come to him in our brokenness, in our unworthiness. And we hear those words, I love you. We receive that mercy and that love every time we come to Mass. And there is a fire in my heart, brothers and sisters, unlike any other fire in my heart, to give my whole life to God. I was convicted of two things. First, of God's love for me, and second, of how disrespectful I was to God. That I was just willing to give him one hour of my week every Sunday at nine o'clock. And here is a man who spilled every single drop of blood for me. You can't repay that with just one hour on Sunday. You have to repay that with your whole life. What great love I experienced. And it was in that moment that I felt called and I shared with a small group that I was thinking about becoming a priest. 
thinking about becoming somebody to perpetuate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ so that not only me, but everyone else experiences this love, this mercy, this forgiveness. And that small group led me to discern the priesthood externally. I went to a small group of young men and women who were thinking about religious life and the priesthood. And I was thinking about it and I I began praying. I prayed every single day. And I was asking Jesus, what do you want from me? And eventually it became very clear in my heart that Jesus wanted me to enter seminary. And I said, let's do it. And I got that application. I filled it out. And I went to seminary. And in those six years of seminary, the Lord transformed me purified my heart, my mind, my soul, so that I could get ready to receive the grace of ordination all the way up to June 1st, 2024, when I laid on the floor of that cathedral, when I knelt before the bishop and he laid hands on me and he prayed that prayer and I became a priest up until this very very moment, Queen of all saints, 1030 Mass, Father Stephen. What great grace. And I think about it, and you know what? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't at that cathedral on that Saturday morning. I wasn't at the cathedral on Saturday morning unless I went through those six years of seminary. I didn't go through those six years in seminary unless I actually said to somebody that I wanted to be a priest and I filled out that application. I would have never said that unless I went to that retreat and experienced Jesus' love. And I wouldn't have gone to that if I did not go to that small group Bible study. And brothers and sisters, here's the kicker. I would have not gone to that small group Bible study if it wasn't for that one college student at that nine o'clock mass, who came up to the pulpit and said, join a small group Bible study, it changed my life. Brothers and sisters, that was a seed. Without that seed, we wouldn't be here. One college sophomore at Indiana University who experienced the love of God at a Bible study, invited me to go, and eventually that led me on a path where we are right now. I wonder if he knew. Did he know when he walked up to that pulpit that his words were going to make a priest? Did he know when he walked up in that pulpit that his words would lead to those words I'm about to say on that altar, the words of consecration where Jesus Christ is going to be made present to us. Did he know? Brothers and sisters, do we know when we plant those little seeds? Do we know when we love our family and our friends enough to share with them what Jesus has done in our life and invite them to deeper discipleship? Do we know the power of our words? Brothers and sisters, we have such a good God. Amen? Amen. And he loves us so much that he saved us from our sins. But he's not satisfied with just saving us from our sins. He wants us to work with him to build his kingdom. And it's no coincidence, it's no accident that Jesus uses the image of a seed for us building his kingdom. It's our job to plant the seed. It's his job to grow it. Brothers and sisters, be courageous. Plant that seed because you have no idea what the Lord is going to grow from it. Your little words can make a priest. I know that. Who knows what your words will do?